Christmas is getting close, you're thinking about treating yourself to a brand new MacBook Air, but the rumors are piling up about the next version. What to do? Hello and welcome back to Marco's Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you have, and if you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. Hands up, I am really, really boring about the M1 MacBook Air, but I don't care. It is without doubt the most impressive laptop I have ever owned. And this is coming from a guy who has a specced up M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro sitting right in front of him. And this is a incredible laptop. Full review of this coming soon. Subscribe, hit the bell if you don't wanna miss that. But it is not as exciting or enjoyable to own, I don't think, as the M1 MacBook Air, which is this little beast. Does that make me crazy? Possibly, who knows. I still use this laptop all of the time. There's just something about the MacBook Air. Anyone who has owned one will tell you that you get very, very attached to this laptop. But why make another video about the M1 MacBook Air? I completely understand if you're asking that question. The reason is really simple. People still ask a huge number of questions about this laptop. People are still buying it, people still want it, but the big issue at the minute is that there are rumors of a M2 powered update to this arriving relatively soon. And that makes buying one of these now potentially a bit risky. Now I think you fit into one of two buyer categories for the MacBook Air. Today I'm going to run through those two types of buyer and help you work out which one you are. So firstly, what do we think the next MacBook Air is going to be like? I think the old tapered, not old, but the current tapered design that we see here on the current MacBook Pro, I think that is going to be ditched completely. Certainly all the renders we've seen and the rumors we've heard point to, as I say, a kind of smaller, thinner version of the new MacBook Pro. There may or may not be a notch on the screen like there is with the new MacBook Pro, which doesn't matter. I think white bezels around the screen are pretty much a certainty. There may or may not be Face ID. I think there'll definitely be new colors to choose from, including the sort of colors that you see with the 24 inch iMac. And it will probably feature the new M2 chip, which will be the next generation of Apple Silicon. And we think that's gonna take the lead of the M1 and really focus on power, but also great battery performance. It probably won't go beyond 16 gigabytes of unified memory, and that's all we know. We don't know when it's gonna arrive, we don't know what the price will be, and more importantly, we don't know if any of that stuff I've just said is true. All this stuff is based on rumors. So keep that in mind for now, but let's try and work out what type of MacBook Air buyer you are. So why should you buy one of these, the M1 MacBook Air now? Well, as I've just mentioned, no one knows what the next version of this is gonna be like. The only people that do are Apple. It could be more expensive. The port situation could be worse. Those white bezels around the screen really may not be to your taste. It could be thicker, it could be heavier. We've seen that with the new MacBook Pros. It might even feature manufacturing defects, which is quite often the case with brand new designs. More importantly, and as I mentioned a moment ago, we don't know when it's gonna arrive. So why would you wait for something that you don't know anything about? If you need a MacBook Air now, or you just want one, buy an M1 MacBook Air, trust me. It remains the most affordable laptop in Apple's lineup that has the M1 chip in it. And if you can get the 16 gig version and add as much storage on there as you can afford, you've got a laptop that's gonna last you many years. Waiting on Apple really is a fool's game. Trust me, I've done it myself no end of times. When you want or need something, it's much better to get it now. There's always gonna be something around the corner that could be better. But equally, the grass isn't always green on the other side. So if you've been going backwards and forwards watching reviews like this one, then go to your local Apple store, local retailer, whoever has these to hand and get yourself one. Because trust me, just like I have, you will fall in love with this thing, no matter what is around the corner. So why shouldn't you buy a MacBook Air now? Well, if you don't technically need or want one, and you have decent willpower, and you're not impatient, and you're really keen to see what Apple does next with Apple Silicon, we're probably not gonna see it this year. It's not gonna arrive before Christmas, but it could arrive early next year. It could be next summer. It could be a year from now. And it's also worth bearing in mind the chip shortages, which is still having an impact on manufacturing. But if you're just curious about where this thing goes next and what Apple does with the M2 chip, if that's what it's called, and if you don't have that overriding need or want for a MacBook Air, then just wait a bit. But you will need willpower, trust me. I can almost guarantee, actually, if you do this and wait or try and wait, you'll probably still come back to channels like mine looking for reviews of this current one because... You'll be curious, I think, still. But if you've got the willpower, and like I say, there's no desperate need, then hold on. If it was me, I'd go out and buy one now, without question. This isn't a review, obviously, of the MacBook Air, but as you know, I'm not gonna keep saying I love it because it's boring, but I do 
love this thing quite a lot. I've actually got to the stage with this laptop where I don't mistreat it, but I do throw it around a little bit to the point where it's got a couple of little dings here and there. And I'll never do this with my 16 inch MacBook Pro because that's just too expensive and too valuable. Whereas this, it's still an expensive piece of tech, but there's something about the MacBook Air that makes it very endearing the more kind of worn it gets. But the difference with this generation of the MacBook Air is that it has the M1 chip inside, which means no matter how beat up it gets, it still has computing power that will last the distance. It's not really gonna slow down for a very, very long time. And providing, like I say, if you can go for the 16 gig version even better, it will just last you for ages. There's a reason you see so many people with old MacBook Airs in coffee shops. They just love them. Now, hands up, I did get caught up in the rumors of the next MacBook Air earlier this year. And back then I made a video where I said, basically don't buy this version yet. There's something new coming. That was stupid of me. I shouldn't have done that. I've learned my lesson. The rumor mill is a complete mess. Anything John Prosser says, take with a pinch of salt. Those rumors back then resulted in nothing. And the same thing could happen now. But hopefully today I've demonstrated that you will probably fit into one of those two buyer categories. Either you need or want one now, or you've got the willpower to wait. You'll know far better than me which of those two categories you fit into. So I would love to know, let me know in the comments, are you gonna buy the M1 MacBook Air now, or are you gonna wait until whatever it is that comes next year? Now, if you've still got some time and you wanna get a bit more of a rounded opinion from me on the M1 MacBook Air, keep watching for a link to my full review, which I did a little while ago at the end of this video. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.